So in order to show you how to do a smooth transition between two scenes, I actually need two scenes. So I just set up two scenes right here. They're both the exact same except different text so we know that they're different scenes. If you want to follow me along on this exactly, just set up your nodes the exact same. I didn't change any of the names. Just canvas layer, margin. Go ahead and set this to full rectangle. This to center. This to center. Label button. All you need for your scenes is something to transition to the other scene. In this case, I'm going to use a button. In your scene, you may use a area 2D that the player walks into and that triggers it. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up a new scene. This is going to be the fader or something, scene fader. This is going to be what's fading out, fading in. I'm going to go ahead and set a color rectangle. So right here, we're just going to set to full rectangle. And this will make so that if we were to drag the fader into the canvas layer, it'll take up the full thing. Now we want this to be below everything else so it's in front of everything. I'm going to set the color to black, so that way it fades to black. You could change the color to whatever you want. Animation player, we're going to go ahead and set up a animation, and this is going to be fade out. Fade out. Actually, let's do fade in. So fade in, we're going to have this play by default, and it's going to start with the color set to completely black. You could have it, I say, up to a second. Anything longer than that feels too long for me unless you're doing some slow fade in for a trailer. So go ahead and select, select the second one, drag your A all the way down, click the key button. Now when you play this, it'll just fade. You could do that shorter. I usually do about 0.5 seconds for my projects, but we'll do one second for this. So I'm going to attach a script and this script's just going to allow us to call the animation and check when it's done. So I'm going to do a fade out. And you could do a fade in if you want to fade multiple times in the same scene, because I'm only going to fade in at the start of each scene. I'm not going to add a fade in. And on the animation player, I'm going to do animation finished, and I'm going to connect that to the color rectangle. We're then going to set a signal called finished. And when it's finished, we're going to do emit signal finished. This is basically going to pass the animation player's signal up to the color rectangle. I'm also going to make sure I toss this fader into the second scene. There we go. And usually when I'm working with it, I just select this, click save. That'll make the fader invisible so you can work on your scene just fine. And then just lock it so that it doesn't get in the way of anything. You could still do other stuff. Now, once you have the scene fader attached to both of them, I'm going to go ahead and attach a script. And this is going to be the level changer. The script is going to just have access to the scene changer. Or in this case, it's called color rectangle. Now find node is a little bit slower than some of the other methods of getting it, but for just checking between this one and this one, you'll be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a on button click, and that's going to connect to the node 2D. It's going to call to change the scene. And I'm going to do scene fader, fade out, then I'm going to set up a yield. This will tell it to wait until it's done. Scene fader. Finished. And then I'm going to do the change scene, which I'm actually going to want to do in a global script. You don't have to do that, but it's normally what I do. So I'm going to do a new script, and this is going to be global. Project, project settings, auto load, select here, global, add. So once you go into the global, you could just backspace all that. For this one, I'm just going to have a var scene equals zero. Var scenes 
and then an array of the scenes. This isn't necessarily the best way to manage manage scenes unless you're doing a game with levels that they play in order. If you're doing it a different way, you may want to do a dictionary so you can find specific scenes. So I'm going to do level one. Make sure it has the same name as the location. .tsen, and I'm going to do a level two. I'm then going to do a function that's going to be called change scene. For this one, I'm going to have it change to level one if it's level two, level two if it's level one. And an easy way to do this is actually just to do scene equals scene plus one length of the scenes. So this will basically say mod the length. So if it's anything past, it'll go back, which allows you to make an easy loop. We're going to then get the tree and change the scene to a new scene we have. Okay. So I'm going to hop in here and call global.change scene. Oh, whoops. Change underscore scene like that. Okay, so now let's make sure they both have those. And then you've got to make sure the button's connected on both of them. Press connect. Oh, we got to attach the script. Level changer right in there. Connect that to there. And that should connect because they're both the same name right there right there so if we run this it's gonna fade in on each one you click next scene and it's not doing anything let's go ahead and check that okay so on the color rectangle make sure you don't forget to disable this so right now it's stopping your mouse clicks from clicking the button so to go ahead and just go in here mouse ignore we're not using it for clicks so now you could change scene and make sure you name it the same. I called it fade underscore out. In here, fade out. So fade underscore out. Now if we run this, next scene, level two. And it waits until this um, scene's done playing because it emits a signal and we catch that signal and continue once the signal is finished or once the animation's finished. So thanks for checking this out. I started using this method in my past few game jams that had uh, multiple scenes, and I kind of like it. You could add other animations to this, but this is the simple one. Like you could have it move over from the left to the right and do a kind of Metroid style scene tree thing, but that adds a bit more difficulty. If you have any questions, just ask. I'll see you around.